Hello, hello. My name is Crystal Chibu, and you're welcome to the Hope Grill, where we teach, infuse, and experience hope. When strong winds blow, only the strong remain standing. The story of my guest today on The Grill is a very interesting one. She's a mother and she's also a financial practitioner. She's been through life and life has given her its own lemons. And she's going to be telling us how she's made a lot of lemonades out of it. You're welcome to The Grill, Ozioma. Thank you for having me, Crystal. It's good to have you here. You. Um, I know that life has given you its own fair share of lemons. And I know that you have a lot of lemons and you've made lots of lemonades out of them. Can we just meet you? Okay. Um, like you already know, my name is Ozioma. I, I work for a microfinance bank presently. I plan to run or I want to run an NGO that has to do with the pain of children's school fees and hospital bills. This passion came when I had my son Michael and I was admitted in the hospital and I saw what other children had to go through. So I, I, I drew this passion and this experience from there knowing that, oh, there are several other children who are going through stuff that I didn't know about. So you talked about your child, Michael. So how many children do you have? Because you look very young. You probably have just Michael. No, I have three kids, three amazing wow. boys. Wow. And Michael is the third. And Michael is the third yes. boy. So what is it about Michael that makes Michael so special and that you keep talking about Michael and wanting to start a not-for-profit because of Michael? Okay. I am, Michael was born in 2012 with a bilateral tibia hemimelia, a case of a missing tibia which led to his amputation. Did you just say both legs? Both legs. So both of Michael's legs are currently amputated. That's right. How did you feel when you had Michael and Michael came out with tibia hemimilemia on both legs? Wow. Okay. So <laughs> on that faithful day, Michael came out and um, his legs were deformed. According to, let me use the words of the doctor, he said, this is a severe deformity, never seen, never known. At that point, life shut, I, like for me, life shut down. Everything went gaga. I haven't seen this before, never heard of it, never read of it. So I'm like, what's this? What's going on? God, what's, what's all of this? Do you hate me so much? Am I paying for my sins? Or is anything happening to me that I do not know about? Or, you know, several questions on my mind going through the orthopedic and the doctors giving you their faces and their reactions and telling you, Madam, you know, in Nigeria, God forbids everything. So when, 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 when we tell you your son will be amputated, please do not say God forbid, because that's the only thing that will save him if he has to work for the rest of his life. So going forward, looking at the whole situation, it took me like four years to accept that my son will be amputated. So why did it take you four years for you to come to that point to do the amputation, even though the doctors told you that he was going to be amputated? You know, like the doctor said that in Nigeria, God forbids everything. When he said that, I said, God forbid. I don't know what amputation is. I've never seen or anyone close to me being amputated. So it was a case of, um, I had to start praying, going to different churches, seeking for answers everywhere and then um, my husband's people saying this has never existed in their lineage where is it coming from and all of that so i think it was just through that process of trying to take a decision and it took four years so i was hoping that something would happen and michael will work one day but after four years i realized that he wasn't working he wasn't even going to school doing nothing he just crawls on his bellies i had to wake up one day and i'm like god maybe we have to do this but what pushed me to having the amputation i remember a certain morning i woke up with michael i i i was trying to dress him up and on trying to wear his trousers, he looks at me 
and he says, Mommy, anytime you're dressing me up, it's always tough for my trousers to come up. Maybe you should just cut this leg off. Wow. And I'm like, what did you say? He said, Mommy, cut my leg off. You know, I, I cried like never before. I cried. It was, it was a tough journey. It got to a point in my life where I had to start praying to God, can you just kill this boy and let me move on? Because everything was at a standstill. I couldn't do anything. There was nobody to talk to, nobody to run to. I was even ashamed because when you, when you carry him and you're walking on the road, people are asking you what happened to him. Why are you always carrying this boy? They ask you all sorts of questions. Did you take drugs? Where did you come from? Who are you married to? You know, all of that. But when he said that that morning, I picked up the courage. I'm like, okay, let's amputate. But then, then, then again, there was no close relation, no friend that knows what amputation is. So I had to start talking to a few people. And of course, that's how I met Crystal. Was your man? You must have been through so much. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Let's just go on a quick break. <laughs> Welcome back. So, Ozioma, you were telling us about, you know, Michael telling you to go ahead and do the amputation and just cut off the leg. Yes. And then, you know, you had some answers. Before uh, that period, I mean, Michael, you said, took you four years to go ahead before the amputation. Was it relating with other people? Did he meet anybody? Were you going to church with him? Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Okay, so in that period of four years, while waiting, he was, he was supposed to have started going to school. Yeah. Of course, his other brothers were going to a certain school. So I wanted to enroll him in the same school. So I got to the school and I spoke to the proprietors of the school saying, I want to enroll my child in your school. The third, this, is, this is my third child. You know Francis and Anthony. Can I enroll Michael? She goes, no, 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 no. This child is disabled. We can't have him. I don't know how the teacher is going to cope. We can't have him in our school. I'm like, but there's nothing wrong with this child. He doesn't have a man mental problem, just an orth orthopedic case. So let's, let's enroll him and it, it, wow. will, it will even make life easier for him. And she said, no, that she can't take him. You know, I think that was one of the worst days of my life. I remember going home with Michael. I was crying on the street because this child, this boy sees his siblings going to school. He wants to go to school. He's asking me questions. Mommy, what happened to my leg? When is my leg going to get better? He keeps, wow. he has asked that over and over again. So I, 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 I was going and I, I was really crying. And I got, I think that was the day I got home and I'm like, I've had enough. Can you just take this child, wherever he's coming from. I don't want, this is not my life. This is not what I planned for my life. Can you just come and take this child? Take his breath, anything, just do with him. I want to move on. But you know, it, it, it was like, the more I prayed for Michael to go, the more he lived. Because I could see a child who had so much strength. Mm. He had so much energy. I know, he right? was resilient. He didn't care what was happening. Even while walking on the floor, he does things even that his siblings couldn't do. So how did he relate with his siblings? And all? Did, did, did they see him different? Did they have a problem with him? Did they also share the same sentiment like you saying, okay, maybe he, sh he shouldn't be here? Yes. Mm. They, they've come to ask me privately that, mommy, what's wrong with Michael? Why is he not walking? When is he going to start walking? I'm, I'm afraid of coming close to him. His legs are not like the normal legs we see. How, I mean, I can't, I can't look at those legs. I'm like, no, Michael is your brother. You have to love him just the way he is. Michael will be fine. He's going to work. Just give us time. You know, and they picked it up from there. But I had to show them how to love Michael. So they saw me loving Michael and they picked up from there. That's very interesting. Can you tell us some of the things that you did? You said you had to show them. How did you show them? Uh, because I'm sure that somebody out there is listening or watching us and the person is wondering, how can I show love to that person that I know that has a disability? Okay, thank you. 
So what I did was I stopped taking Michael's bath. I would send his elder brother, go and take his bath for him. Wow. So while he's taking his bath, he touches those legs and he sees that there is nothing wrong with those legs. So it's mm. not as if when you touch the legs, they get broken or they get deformed the more. It's just normal. So I, he had to start dressing Michael up, coming very close to Michael, teaching Michael, even before Michael started school, teaching Michael some little assignments and all of that. So they began to learn. And then he said feeding Michael as well, changing his diapers, changing his trousers. And he, okay, he was like, oh, there's really nothing wrong with this leg. Mommy, this oh. legs they're actually fine. They are okay. And I'm like, yes. So Michael wanted you to amputate the legs. You got fed up. What then happened? Okay, so because I have spoken to a few people about Michael, who are, they've also seen Michael's legs. So on a certain evening, the, the school I wanted to take Michael to, the headmistress of that school, she stays very close to me. And then she runs to my house. She's like, come, 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 I heard something, I heard something. I'm like, what did you hear? I think it was Wazobia FM or so. She's like, I heard somebody, her name is Crystal, talking about child amputees, deformity and all of that. And she said they'll be going for out, something called out on a limb. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. And then she said, I wrote their number down. Can you call this number? I'm like, oh, good. So I took the number from her and I called. And I spoke, I, 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 I spoke to someone at the Ready Foundation. And she said, yes, we'll be going for out on a limb. What's wrong with your child? And I told her everything. She said, don't worry, bring your child. We'll be happy to meet him. So I brought Michael to out on a limb. 2015. Wow. So afterwards, what did you now do? And um, how did you cope afterwards? Okay. So I would say hope for me started from out on a limp. Wow. Because I spoke to you and then you took me through Beulah's journey. And then going forward, I realized, oh, I'm not in this alone. There is actually someone I can always talk to. And I went straight to the hospital and I told the doctors, we are good to go, do the amputation. After you did the amputation, did anything change from before that time or how did you cope? Okay. Because I know from living this life that life before amputation is different from life after amputation. Yeah. So did anything change for you? Yes. So initially after amputation, it was like things got worse for Michael because I'm sure he never expected that those legs were going to be amputated, that he wasn't going to see them again. So the moment he realized that these legs are not there, he screamed, Ah, oh, no, my legs! I'm like, calm down, calm down. We'll get you new legs. You walk, that, you, you, walk, you walk with a new leg. I was like, what, a new leg? No, 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 I want my leg. I'm like, just calm down, son, calm down. And then, you know, the questions, mommy, when is a new leg coming in? I'm like- So hold that to us, because I can already see the smile, even on your own face. It looks to me like this experience has really changed you for the better. What has this experience done to you? Okay, so I've become a better person. I have also learned that the world is full of people who are looking for solutions to their problems. If you find solutions to yours, you become a solution provider. Wow. Um, there's someone out there that is faced with the same situation or a similar situation. What would you tell that person to do? Don't give up on hope. There is always a next breath. There is nothing like the last breath. Take a deep breath, move on, talk to somebody well thank you so very much for coming i really feel like giving you a hug i hope it's okay to hug you yes thank you so much thank you so much for giving hope to michael and i'm sure to so many people that watched us today do not go anywhere we'll be right back
the hope girl. I am in a relationship with a really great guy. The only problem is I have a three-year-old daughter and he doesn't know. I'm scared that if he finds out, he'll call off the relationship. I hate the deceit, but I don't want to lose him. What do I do? You need to first pause and just know that it's a journey to disaster if you don't fix immediately. If he loves you the way you are and he gets to know, he will be more disappointed than the time that you did not tell me about it. So please pack yourself from wherever you are right now and don't go and talk to him about it. And if you know you can't confront it directly, you probably have someone, you have friends, you have family, people that you can go through, but keeping it away from him is not the solution. Even if he marries you today and he finds out 10 years from now, he will be disappointed and probably still leave you. So that thing that you're, you're, you're not trying to lose him, you will still lose him. All. So please and please and please, I'm begging you to go and ensure that you fix it by telling him there's nothing to hide if he loves you the way you are today and not for anything he will love you with your three-year-old daughter and he could even take her in as his own daughter and trust me there's nothing to worry about you will always be all right okay quote for the week hope is the power of being cheerful in circumstances that we know to be desperate. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me on The Hope Grill. Today we had such a fantastic yet emotional conversation with Ozioma Alaba. Remember, whatever you are going through, it's going to be okay. And until I see you the next time, I want you to stay strong. I want you to stay inspired and have a hope-filled time. Bye.